Okay, so his next task that he uses a lot is grounding. And I consider grounding for me personally when I'm standing somewhere and I'm starting to disassociate or like I'm, sta I'm usually standing or sitting and I'm starting to like feel woozy or feel like something's off in mentally or physically, he will um, come and lay on my feet as just like a, hello, you're in the present, you're not wherever you are in your mind. He can guide me to a quiet place. If I'm having a fatigue episode or a disassociative episode, I can say, um, lead me and he will not only lead me through a crowd or whatever, I'll get to that, but he will lead me to a clearing that's quiet, usually with some place to sit. And that was a task that took like over a year to master and I started training it on like day one. So, or getting him like the foundations for it. I did not push him too hard too fast, otherwise he would have burned out and washed a long time ago. Next is tactile stimulation, and this is one that he has a little bit of trouble with, I'm not gonna lie, um, but he still does it when I need him to, and it's just licking my face. Anyway, nice, Levi. He has such great manners, such great manners. Cover slash deep pressure therapy. He will cover me for a few reasons. One would be like grounding. If, if I'm sitting down, he'll cover me with my um, legs across. I mean, w w if my legs are crossed, he will lay across me like that and not let me up until my heart rate regulates or whatever. And, or my fatigue stops or my anxiety stops or whatever. I let him be the judge of when to let me up. And the way that I did that was whenever I felt better, I would just tell him to get off me but now when I feel better he just automatically gets off and that's how I know oh I also use DPT when my blood pressure is out of control so if it's too low I'll have him lay down and I put my legs in front of me and then I have him lay on the bottom half of my legs and he's so heavy that he will cut off their circulation of those lower parts of my legs and then force the blood back up into my heart and my brain so that I feel better in about two minutes and that's not like a permanent fix but it's a quick fix to the point where like I can get to somewhere safer or like call someone or whatever it gets me it buys me about like 15 minutes of time hi mr. man he's so funny next anxiety slash panic attack alert so the difference between an anxiety and panic attack is an anxiety attack has a trigger and a panic attack does not have a trigger. So anxiety attacks can come on um, if things happen to, if things change too quickly. I don't deal with um, rapid change very well. Like if plans change suddenly, it makes me flustered. He will alert to, wow, loudest drinker in the land. He will tell me when I'm gonna have it like panic attack before I know it, I will. They just come out of nowhere. And I think mine are related to adrenaline attacks because my adrenals have a really hard time regulating and sometimes they like overestimate how much adrenaline I need. It's kind of complicated. Next is anxiety attack or panic attack interruption. Say he alerts but I can't stop the anxiety attack or a panic attack from happening. I have physical cues where like I'll cover my face and I'll get into a ball and or I'll be on the ground. He has all these physical cues that he looks for that we've worked on and then he will physically get in between me and myself. Like if my hands are in front of my face he will move my hands. If my head is in my knees he will get in between us and move me, um, help me stand up or help me sit up all the way because when you're like this you can't breathe very well. So if you're already hyperventilating and you're already hunched down like this then you're gonna have a harder time catching your breath. Also when I have an asthma attack or anxiety attack or panic attack and I am hyperventilating but you know you're breathing very very quickly and you can't catch your breath and he will put his paws on me and knock me down and um, like onto my back and then he will climb over my chest and put pressure on my chest so it forces me to regulate my own breathing without anxiety medication why don't you just use Xanax Alex and it's like because if you watched my chronic illness journey video you know I was on Xanax for a long time and you know how messed up it made me so if I have to have a dog instead of Xanax fine next 
Depressive episode interruption. A depressive episode is a long period of no executive function. There's like a definition of how long one is, but like that's kind of a gray area. And I just personally say that my depressive episodes last between three days and three months. And although he cannot make it stop completely, he can ease the blow of the episode by forcing me to get out of bed when it's safe for me to, um, or just being with me um, and staying in contact with me, like physical contact with me, because if he does that, then he can keep me present and it makes it a lot, a lot easier for me to do self-care if I'm present. Whether you consider that a task or not, I don't care because he does other tasks, but it's something that he does and I want to be honest with you about it. Another thing he does is called crowd leading. I've been working with him on this since he was like five or six months old. It's where I say, lead me. He just looked at me. <laughs> um, he's, he's down there on the concrete. He just gets really hot. He has um, what's known as a triple coat. So he gets really heated easily and the lights are on in here. So he's just on the concrete ground right next to me um, in my room. Just like continually every once in a while making eye contact with me and that is exactly what he's supposed to be doing. When he crowd leads me, he can see through, we're, say we're in a, a crowd at Disney and it's like, it makes me very nervous to be in a crowd full of people and like not have a bubble of space around me. It just makes me anxious. Just, there's a lot of reasons why it makes me anxious. I don't want to go into it, but he can see through the legs and see where the openings are in the crowd way better than I can. Plus, if, if I'm in a crowd, then I'm usually um, overstimulated and he will automatically pull ahead of me. I need to get this on video sometime. Maybe I will the next time I'm at Disney. He will pull ahead of me and lead me to a clearing in the crowd. Part of the way I trained him to do that is once he got me to that clearing, I would find somewhere to sit or I would find some place quiet and then he just learned over time. It's like almost annoying how smart he is sometimes because it's really hard to keep him occupied. He gets bored really easily. He will also find a person to get help and it's not just like he doesn't do any person. I don't like him to do any person because like if he just, if I'm in a public place and he just like walks up to some person he's a service dog and like jumps on them and then runs the other way like that average person isn't gonna get oh this is a service dog and they're taking me to their owner like they just don't get it so I only have him um, find people that are in my life that are close to me but if I have someone else with me like my mom or Sam or like the really only two people he can get are my mom and Sam so far just because they're with me a lot if I say find mommy then and he's attached to me he will drag me to her and that happens if I'm disoriented or I can't find her somewhere or something's wrong and we get separated somehow because sometimes we do that. Sometimes I'll go to a store with my mom and we just like take, go our separate ways and then come meet back in, at the end. But sometimes I can't find her. That makes me really anxious. And sometimes I can't find her and I just want to know where she is without like wasting my energy and looking all around the store. So to save myself spoons, he can smell her. And he will. He leads me right to her every single time. And that's another training video I really wanna get made soon. Also, if he's in my house and I say, get mommy, he will find wherever she is in the house, jump on her, and that's how she knows that he's coming to get her, to bring her to me. And he can wake her up from a, like a dead sleep in the middle of the night on her bed and that's really helpful for when I'm having a hard time and I can't hold, I can't call out or I can't get out of bed or whatever and I need medicine or, or something. That's all his tasks. If you have any questions about his tasks, message me. Another thing that I wanted to address in this video is his knee and elbow surgeries. He had an initial knee and hip and elbow check when he was like two or three months. I have a vet that I trust very much and he said that his hips look great, everything looks good. His knees are a little loose, he said, but that should be fine over time. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, as he got older, he started to get pain in different parts of his body and I noticed that he was in pain, although it was hard to notice that he was in pain because Levi is just not a complainer. If he's in pain, he acts out or he will pull on the lead. That's how I know that he's uncomfortable comfortable or hot or in pain or something is when he pulls on the lead or when he's a bad boy. I mean, he can be a little jerk just like all 
golden retriever puppies can but as he's gotten older he's really turned into a quite the good boy after those were all clear and he started to get those pains in his body i thought hey everybody thanks for watching part two i wish i could pat you on the back for making it this far watch part three at the link below